Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for those of us, those of you that have already joined us. Um, as is normal these days, I can still see a number of people are still joining. So if you don't mind bearing with us for another minute or two, uh, we'll get started very shortly. Thank you. Hello, right, uh, let's make a start. Um, firstly, hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, uh, which is all about protecting exchange online. Um, first things first, uh, we'll start with some introductions. Uh, so I'll introduce you to today's panelists. Uh, I'm Andy Sherritt, I'm the Head of Business Development here at IT Health and I'll pass over to Chris. Say hello, Chris. Hello, I'm Chris Watkinson, an account manager from Sophos. And uh, good afternoon, all. Paul Brunier, I'm the uh, MEA pre sales director from ArcServe. Thank you, Chris and Paul. So I'll, I'll very shortly be handing over to Chris and Paul to go through uh, the meat of today's presentation. Uh, before I do that, uh, quickly housekeeping points. Uh, as normal, we're recording the session, so uh, we'll make available that link to the recording by email to you after this so you can share with any of your colleagues also questions we do encourage them please so you should be able to see a question panel which is normally on the right hand side of your screen please post questions in there throughout the session and i'll be monitoring those um, and we'll save some time at the end to answer them as best we can uh, so in terms of today's topic it's focused on protecting exchange online and helping you to understand kind of where the security gaps are as we see them. Um, certainly IT Health are noticing a lot of NHS trusts moving to Exchange Online, especially with uh, N365. Uh, so we really wanted to show you how Sophos and ArcServe can help you to avoid things like security breaches or uh, making sure that you've got uh, access and availability to those mailboxes at all times. Uh, the two technologies, Sophos and ArcServe, do actually integrate together. Um, so they, you know, you can implement them both very easily and, and manage them uh, even through Sophos Central. So we thought it would be a good thing to join this up into a joint session. Um, and obviously IT Health are here as the kind of NHS partner for both of the vendors. So without further ado, I hand you over to Chris, who can initially talk you through how Sophos can help with, ex with securing exchange online. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Andy. Make sure I can control this. So I'm I'm hoping you know who who Sophos are, um, but just in case you don't, or to uh, to reconfirm our position in the market, our primary focus is cyber security. We don't make games consoles or operating systems. Cyber security is all we do, and I can say with confidence we do it well. Uh, we've been recognised as a leader in IT security market for the last 30 years and have been protecting the NHS for that amount of time. Uh, we've got the ability to protect all areas of your estate, your endpoint, your servers, your mobiles, your emails, which we'll be talking about today, and even your perimeter through our XG firewall, all through one single easy to manage uh, management console. Uh, add to to add to our credentials, uh, we're a leader in both the Gartner UTM and uh, Endpoint Security Magic Quadrants with the latter for the uh, for the last 12 years. So things we'll cover today, we've got, uh, we'll talk about the Microsoft Shared uh, Responsibility Model uh, and, and the often misconceived belief that once your data is in the Microsoft uh, data center that they take care of all your security. We'll discuss the limitations of the built-in data protection mechanisms that come with Exchange Online, and we've got evidence as well to, to back that up. 
we'll talk about why uh, a layered security approach is recommended. In fact, is the only approach that you should be talking about. And, and also how to ensure email con uh, continuity uh, in the event of an outage uh, with the latest protection against malware, spam, and phishing attacks. So Microsoft have a shared security model that clearly defines where their responsibility ends uh, and yours as their customer begins. It's freely available on the Microsoft website. Um, if we, you know, if we focus that on email specifically, uh, that means that you as their customer are responsible for protection against ransomware, uh, malware, um, hackers uh, and rogue apps. So where are we now? Well, Microsoft, you do get basic anti, uh, sorry, basic level anti-spam and anti-malware, but it's well known and well documented that it's not enough to protect you from modern threats and even less advanced threats such as spam. Um, even the introduction of Microsoft's Advanced Threat Protection, or ATP as it's more commonly known, has proven not to deliver the level of protection required to withstand modern day cyber criminals. ATP um, is positioned as a tool that protects against sophisticated threats such as ransomware. And just as a, as a measure of how serious ransomware is in the modern day, we at Sophos see about 400,000 unique, never seen before, so completely new malware samples every single day. Uh, and 80% of those are ransomware. I mean, it's, we're in an age where criminals don't just want your data. Uh, they want your money too you know it's, it's pretty bad this report um or this is an extract from a report that was delivered by uh, se labs earlier this year uh, and because microsoft updates uh, for their antivirus signatures are hourly the actual detection rates for office 365 or exchange online um, alone is 73 percent and office 365 with atp is 87 percent they actually finish bottom of the uh, of the scoring charts on this one. So to summarize the risks, using Microsoft alone increases uh, the risks of spam and malware entering into your environment. Uh, the results of this could obviously be catastrophic. You know, there's some well documented uh, um, events that have been happening in the news recently across all public sector. Um, we've already evidenced their their sort of poor detection rates um, and this is compounded by Gartner who have commented that many customers are, are having issues uh, 95 not, sorry 94 percent of all malware is delivered by email um, and as you probably imagine office 365 is the most targeted software in the world so it's absolutely paramount that you get the right protection for the first time so enter defense in depth, also known as layered approach to security. So when used in conjunction with the native security features of Microsoft Office 365 uh, or M365, a defense in depth strategy can increase your security posture and provide a much greater degree of cyber resilience uh, with uh, defense in depth or a layered approach to cyber security. If one security control provides ineffective, then there are others in place to fill uh, the breach. So by integrating additional product mechanisms from Sophos and of course our friends at ArcServe, uh, the defense in depth model closes any gaps in the company's defense. Don't just take our word for it. That's a state that's a, um, a statement from the National Cyber Security Center. So what's our approach to cybersecurity? Education, education, education. At, Soft, Soft, uh, at Sophos, we encourage cybersecurity education, education for end users, which can be delivered through our phishing simulation software, and education for those who manage these cybersecurity systems. We've recently delivered free training and health checks to maintain a good cyber hygiene. Simplicity versus complexity. As it says there, complexity is the enemy 
of security and causes additional risk to an organization. Security solutions need to protect against complex threats, but they need to be easy to deploy and configure and maintain on an ongoing basis. So we'd like to uh, the opportun opportunity really to recommend for consideration, of course, Sophos Email Advanced to provide industry leading anti malware and anti spam protection in front of your Office 365. Um, so that's the forward facing layer of protection uh, that customers have always benefited from in the past using our uh, on premise solutions. Sophos Central, which uh, Sophos Email sits in, has been developed for those who are looking for a simple way to protect against the most advanced threats. Sophos Central can manage as few as 100 mailboxes, but is powerful enough to scale up to the largest of NHS trusts and uh, often larger CSUs. Sophos Central itself is a cloud based centralized management platform. Uh, it provides unified console for managing all your Sophos products, including endpoint and server protection, email which we'll talk about today, wireless encryption, mobile, and of course, our XG firewall. And if you've got multiple firewalls, Software Central can provide the full group firewall management. We like to say Software Central is 101 for management efficiency. One management console. You can manage everything through the Software Central platform. You only need uh, to log onto one console to see the control of all your security. There's a common interface across all products. So you've got that um, level of consistency and familiarity and usability at all times. There are no servers, zero servers. Software Central is cloud based, as you're probably gathering. So you can access it anytime from any location. Plus, you don't have to worry about on premise servers to buy and maintain. And of course, one version of the truth, one source of the truth. Since everything's connected and it's communicating constantly, you can see a pretty, pretty um, definitive, uh, or you can see pretty definitively what got caught and which products caught it. I mean, that's pretty hard to do with a, a bunch of disparate products that are tied together with, um, you know, like a seam or, or a sort of built-in connectors. Uh, deployment of um, deployment of um, Sophos uh, email is really easy. As, as long as you can control the uh, the MX records, then it's a simple change to route the email through through Central, um, and then you can just simply bring in um, users and the mailboxes with. It's really handy as your an on-premise Active Directory synchronization tool. Um, as the name suggests, Sophos Email is fully integrated with Sophos Central's uh, management console. Uh, and unlike other security providers that require you to manage multiple management portals, multiple products, and even multiple vendors to achieve complete protection, as is part of the winning Sophos Central strategy, uh, making Sophos the only security provider to offer um, a single cloud based console for email, endpoint, mobile, web encryption wireless probably seeing a theme here <laughs> i'd like to talk to you now about um three features of um sophos email advanced that's uh, predict predict uh, i get my teeth in proactive security sandboxing uh, compromised mailbox detection and targeted security training awareness so if we um, sort of dive into the sandbox process um, as a key differentiator for the moment, one, one, uh, once a file has been submitted and detonated in a virtual machine in the cloud, you can see all the new advanced features at work. So with the likes of CryptoGuard, which is detecting ransomware uh, by its tail-to-tail -tail sign of rapid encryption files, while uh, WipeGuard in the same way it works to protect the master boot record from malicious encryption. Add to that 
the addition of machine learning into Sandstorm. Um, so as well as observing all the uh, behavioral characteristics of a file, what we can do now is also look at the machine learning score of an executable file uh, to detect previously unknown malware. Uh, and thanks to that, we're now stopping, I believe it's about 10% more of the XE malware. Compromised mailbox detection. So a question, how do you know if your mailbox has been compromised and it's not there working against you and sending spam to maybe one of your suppliers or one of your customers? Or how, how, do, you, how do you spot the signs? Well, what you need is a connected approach where your email security shares threat intelligence with your endpoint to automatically clean up any um, infected computers sending outbound spam and viruses and that is exactly what synchronized security from Sophos does you know it enables you to activate endpoint scans right from the email settings menu in Sophos Central and with with that you know shared user um, list mailboxes uh, protected by Sophos email are also visible to the endpoint and once an endpoint is linked to that selected mailbox Synchronized security just takes care of the rest, blocking compromised mailboxes from sending further malicious messages and cleaning up any infection on the computer before restoring access. So targeted security awareness training. 50% of employees have admitted to clicking links from unknown senders. I mean, that is criminal in itself, but that turns out to be a virus or a scam. So how can you, as an IT department, identify those risky users? You know, those, those who need better training around how to spot and not click on those attacks. Again, synchronized security takes the guesswork out of finding those users for you. You know, those, those users who regularly click malicious links and need more of a targeted approach to training. So by connecting our email security with fish threat, which is our security training and attack simulation solution. From Software Central, you can quickly identify those email users who have been warned or blocked from visiting a website due to a high risk profile. It's then a simple one click to enroll those users into, um, into fish threat simulation and training. And uh, you can provide, tra you, you know, you can then prove if that training has worked through the dashboard. Um, if it's working, you can see who, when, uh, which device is simulated, you know, has a simulated attack, um, and also, you know, if that was reported. So I just want to talk about the latest threat intelligence. Am I, am I doing all right for time, Andy? Yeah, you're good, Chris. Good for another five minutes. Okay, I'll speak quicker. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so threat intelligence is delivered by our Sophos Labs. So that's giving um, us the latest understanding of the threat landscape and how to block attacks. Sophos, tab, uh, Sophos Labs is um, a globally distributed organization based out of, I believe it's eight countries or eight locations, all within excellent, having an excellent uh, geographic spread. This allows us at Sophos to provide 24-7 coverage to the whole threat landscape globally um, and there are only a handful of vendors that uh, have labs set up like this running primary research into the latest threats and how to stop them good news is combined there we go I was about to say the good news is that with uh, with our threat intelligence and uh, Sophos email, uh, Sophos email blocks 99% of unwanted email. So it's got its IT reputation filtering, blocks up to 90% of spam at the door, anti-spam, antivirus engines catch the rest. Email filtering uses advanced detection methods across multiple languages. Reputation filtering blocks 90% of unwanted emails. With our anti-spam engine, that catches the rest, including the latest phishing attacks, um, malicious attachments, quarantining them where required. There's then methods such as um, sender genotype, which is our next generation 
uh, reputation filtering technology. This what this does is it eliminates botnet spam at the IP connection level by monitoring connection requests, and it then rejects those showing evidence of botnet connections. Um, Sophos email anti spam and antivirus also securely and accurately pre-filters traffic, so suspicious files are submitted to Sandstorm, ensuring that there's like minimum latency for the end user impact. We've then got the Sophos delay queue. So the delay queue gives that future-proof protection against um, attacks known as show, I can't get my teeth in. snowshoe and hailstorm spam. Um, which is the intelligent delaying suspicious that well sorry it's intelligently delaying suspicious mails to run uh, further anti-spam checks what it does then is it automatically rescans content with updated def definitions uh, to increase that detection I mean the results have been fantastic since the introduction of Sophos delay queue uh, with about 50% of customers seeing at least a 10% increase in, in detected spam and 75% um, customers see a measurable reduction in delivered um, shows, uh, no shoe spam, all you know, and all with zero customers' complaints about you know lim uh, legitimate um, delayed emails. But here's how it works. So, um, yeah. So when when a delay queue feature is switched on, your email gateway will uh, enter into a 11-day 11, 11 learning routine to determine your organization's normal behavior. So it's recognizing IP addresses to build a, like a history database and highly accurate queuing uh, heuristic rules to determine suspicious mail. Uh, the gateway then uses these rules to sort of determine how likely a suspicious email is to be spam and moves that email into the delay queue, depending on how suspicious the emails are, of course. Uh, they're then held there for like between five and 60 minutes. As a, as a snowshoe and hailstorm spam campaign is typically over within minutes, during that time the mail spends in the delay, delay queue, Sophos Labs will have developed the definitions required and detect, campa uh, detect any campaign emails. So when when that mail is released for the delay from the delay queue, it's rescanned, and then the spam will be blocked. And if it still looks suspicious, then it'll go through that again. So we've also got authorized sender checks, very important. I know in in healthcare. Um, so using the combination of authentication techniques. Sophos email allows you to identify and allow legitimate emails from just two partners uh, and also to be able to block sort of imposter emails as well. So we've got the uh, sender policy framework which identifies IP addresses authorized to send email from the domain. Um, DKIM or domain keys uh, identified mail provides cryptographic proof that messages were sent from a specific sender and that they haven't been tampered with in transit. Uh, and the one that is obviously pretty big in the NHS, which is uh, DMARC, so the Domain Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance, if I've got that right, I deserve a pat on the back, uh, deserves, uh, and so it determines what to do when messages fail, you know, the SPF or the DKIM, checks from the centre, you know, DMARC will then come in. And we've also got, um, header anomaly detection to identify if a sender's display name is the same as one of uh, one of yours in, in the internal uh, list. So yeah, they're just single click as you can see on here, all achieved by a single click of a radio button. Uh, blocking malicious URLs, we've got a great feature called time to click protection, which checks a website's reputation of the email links before the delivery of the email, and again, when you click it, so you can block those sort of stealthy delayed attacks that one email security products can miss. I mean, Microsoft offers something called link protection within ATP, but these links are only checked again against uh, 
reactive blacklists at the time that the link is checked. So if you imagine that an email may be sent at midnight, the link at the time is clean and reputable. Then at 8.30 in the morning, just as people are logging on and just about to check their emails, that link is changed to be malicious. With time to click, you can avoid that threat. So email continuity. Uh, well, it can help. That's where softwares can help with free features that ensure business continuity if in the event of an out um, an outage from your provider. So first, we've got an automated alert which lets you know if a mail can't be delivered due to a cloud outage, so they can inform you first. Uh, second, Sophos Cloud Gateway scans mails for threats before the research, uh, before it reaches Office 365 mail servers. We can queue those messages that may, uh, that mail to make sure that they're never lost. And third, we've got um, an emergency inbox that end users have direct access to that queued email to so you can so you can remain productive. I think at the moment it's just read only. But there's definitely going to be the ability to actually send and receive in future releases. I'd have to double check that. So just to see it in work. So if a cloud service provider, um, such as Office 365, suffers an outage, emails from the sender gets to the uh, Sophos Cloud Gateway, or the, sorry, the Sophos Email Gateway, um, and as long as the outage continues then the end users can have access via to the mails emergency inbox once the service is restored the mails are just simply routed as they should have so just to summarize um you know the the protection offered you'll see all the layers are provided by Sophos. You know, I don't want to go over them again. And, and, but you know, you've got your IP reputation, filtering the blocks of up to 90%. Um, Sophos email, anti-spam and antivirus security and accurately pre-filters. So only suspicious files and advanced protection are done. Um, and lastly, you know, protection sent, you know, protection against sensitive information. You know, we've got content control that allows you to filter inbound and outbound messages for specific file types and keywords in email subject lines, message content, file names, so to prevent data, lo data loss. We also have encryption covering uh, standard email into an encrypted PDF and attachments sent direct to the recipient. And all the features that you can see here, um, yeah, the good news is that they all, they're all included in Sophos Email Advanced you know there are no there are no add-ons it's all included in that sort of one one size fits all and if if you'd like to try um sophos email central email advanced then you you're welcome to do so because you can for 30 days via our uh, sophos central console so that's it for me i'm going to pass you to paul who will talk to you about how you secure your data that's great. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, appreciate that. And um, there you go. Snowshoe spamming. There's one I think I'm going to use in a future discussion. <laughs> Thank you it's very real. much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, data protection. So we've heard from Chris uh, talking about data security, and uh, I'm going to talk from from an ARCSA perspective. But the single focus is still the same. It's about Microsoft 365. How do we, should we, be securing Microsoft Exchange online? So um, I'll go through this, um, uh, you know, fairly quickly. We'll have chance for questions toward the end. Um, so I represent ArcServe, and we are the most experienced data protection provider. We've been going for over 37 years. So we've got a lot of experience in this marketplace. But we're here to talk about 365, and I'm just going to touch on a couple of points that Chris already did. So, hey, we're talking the same language here. And we phrase it in terms of the uncomfortable truth about 365 because, well, why should you actually consider, think about even protecting your data? First of all, security, you've heard it from Chris. You've got to protect your whole environment and includes very specifically 365 against hackers and malwares. You've also got to consider the human error. So data loss can be caused by human error. It might be mine, it might be insignificant, but it's still there. And then 
yeah, the third point is that Microsoft actually are keen to point out, well, when you read the details, that the data protection actually is out of scope. This is something that you've got to consider, not uh, Microsoft. Okay. Um, now, a stat is today more than 50% of all organizations use Microsoft 365. But out of those, 92% don't back up their data. This is interesting. So just touching on these three themes, security. Um, I mean, you know, there's a picture here, the bad guy, you know, the hacker, whatever, the disaffected person. So, you know, when this happens, how do you maintain operations? I've got a couple of examples here. This is not within the NHS realms. I didn't know who would be on the call today. So I thought I'd stay away from uh, NHS. There's a couple of um, other organizations within the public sector, a couple of universities here that have been hit fairly recently. I want to draw your attention very briefly to Newcastle University with the flash and the register on the right hand side. You might have heard about this. Um, this actually um, happened or was reported in September. This information is all in the public domain. And interestingly for me, it mentions in that uh, sentence the Doppelpaymer gang. Now, you might not be familiar with that as a name, but it's a gang. It's an organized group of people. In this graphic I've got, you know, in the background now, we've got this picture of this person wearing a hoodie and, you know, a disaffected young person in their, in their room. No longer. Um, a lot of these attacks are coordinated by highly sophisticated, highly educated and motivated people. Why would they attack a university? It's all about them attributing a financial gain to the service that that particular company, in this case, the university actually offers. So these are very targeted, very specific attacks. And a lot of this comes in through phishing. Chris mentioned that. Phishing is essentially through email. Now, human error. The, the report I found here, the Data Store 365, and they actually say that human error accounts for 64% of all data loss incidents within Microsoft 365. Um, next being, being hackers and ransomware and so on. This report only talks about the um, numbers of uh, occurrences, not the impact. Accidental deletion of a mail is kind of minor, a person, breaching somebody's uh, password, for example, a hacker can have much far reaching impact as well. But human error is another factor that can impact um, organizations use of um, Microsoft 365. And there's a few areas on the left hand side, you know, phishing attacks and uh, poor password uh, hygiene and that kind of thing. There's a whole raft of discussion around this. We don't have time to go into it right now. But the key thing, and it's just to reiterate the point that Chris made is that the Microsoft shared responsibility model places the responsibility on you, on you guys to look after your data. Microsoft model is all about um, protecting the infrastructure upon which 365 runs. It's not about protecting the content. So it's a key misunderstanding that I find when I talk with customers um, all the time at the minute, they just assume I'm using uh, 365, Microsoft protects everything, don't have to worry about it. Well, you ought to start thinking again about this. So let me, you know, just go through a couple of points here. What does Microsoft 365 provide? So it protects the platform, the infrastructure from uptime and from disaster. It gives you the ability to recover items from trash. Fine. OK, if you're happy doing that, not a problem. Um, but data does get purged. Um, at maximum 93 days. Some data will get purged a lot sooner than that. It does not give you that point in time recovery like a traditional backup would. Um, we know Microsoft can offer legal discovery, but legal discovery is not a backup mechanism. It's more to do with, well, as it says there, for legal reasons. There's version history capability, but it is not a substitute for backup. Basically, there's an industry-wide um, mechanism tool process, if you will, called the 321 rule. Three copies of data, two different media, one off-site or air gat. Microsoft did not follow that at all. Incidentally, that 321 rule is advocated by the National Cybersecurity Center, NCSC, which is a body that Chris mentioned in his presentation as well. And we ask to very much adhere and follow what that body and others worldwide actually advocate as well. But in the UK, very much about the NCSC. So uh, I'll just kind of run through some specifics here in terms of retention. So the maximum time is 90 days. Uh, this is what Microsoft actually provide. And then any items deleted from recycle bin are removed, absolutely destroyed, lost, whatever, after 90 days. So that 90 day theme keeps on coming in. If a mailbox is deleted, you can restore it within 30 days after that. Otherwise, it's lost forever. OK, there's a couple of options that you can subscribe, you know, pay extra money for to have an inactive mailbox feature. 
but essentially we're talking about days. Um, point in time recovery, it's simply not supported. And this is what backup and recovery you know, mechanism is actually there for. And so basically, yeah, it's the same thing. Backup, offsite backup, it's not supported. So you, you, know, you may be relying on Microsoft to look after your data, but the reality is, is that at best, it's a matter of days that they're going to keep for you. But it does not substitute, it does not replace a traditional backup and recovery mechanism. So, how can we help? Or how might we be able to help? So this is uh, us coming at this from, from an ArcServe perspective. We are in the business of data protection. And as you'll see, hopefully, just in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes or so, you will hopefully get a picture now that data protection and data management, which we are in the business of, is really converging quite closely, quite tightly now with data security that Chris was talking about from a Sophos perspective. And that in itself is quite an interesting shift within the overall industry that, that we're seeing. So we've been providing data protection, data management um, capabilities for quite some time now. We have a, um, a core product, flagship product, we call it the Unified Data Protection Ox of UDP, and we can protect things on premise, uh, virtualized, physical, in the cloud. Um, but also specifically, you can see that at the top right, we also can protect Microsoft 365, very specifically Exchange Online, that's what we're talking about, also SharePoint Online, also OneDrive. Uh, and they're the three elements that organizations we find when they actually decide to branch out, start using 365, they're the three core products that they use, and then they go into exploring some of the other features, things like Teams and so on as we go on. But what I wanted to um, just convey here is that as a product, we have a product called UDP, which can help protect data stored within 365. Now, just to drill down a little bit more, um, they're the three areas, um, Exchange, SharePoint, and OneDrive. And we can deploy our solution, um, UDP, we can deploy it as software only, as appliances, all this kind of thing. But it gives you the kind of capabilities that you would want from a backup and recovery solution. So granular backup, a mailbox level recovery, mail item level recovery, if you need to go down to that, look, absolutely fine. Uh, we offer this integration with these three services, Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and we've got lots of uh, lots of options in terms of how it could be deployed to support your organizations. We've got inbuilt deduplication and compression, so it's super efficient, and we can actually store that data in one location, or we can take copies of that data. Remember, I mentioned that three to one rule. We can store copies of that data, generate multiple copies, and disperse them to different locations, perhaps to other disk systems, other cloud platforms and even tape as well. But we do that from this unified management perspective, which is UDP. Now, as we go forward, our solution stack, um, we can offer a solution uh, which is software only, and that's available on uh, per socket, per server, or even on a per, per terabyte per capacity basis. We can offer a turnkey appliance. We find a lot of organizations actually prefer to go down this route. It's basically it's a plug and play appliance, and we can offer cloud only options as well. You don't want anything on your uh, data center on premise, you just want to go straight to cloud. Absolutely fine. We operate our own cloud data centers all around the world. Uh, plus, we also um, work with uh, Amazon. AWS and Microsoft Azure for their public cloud offerings as well. So we can actually flex and configure any kind of solution pretty much to suit anybody. Let's just bring this back round to this conversation now. And this is about providing support for the Microsoft 365 area, specifically Exchange within that uh, you know the Office bundle, as it were. We provide total protection for that, as we've already talked about. Now, there's three platforms there: ArcServe, Sophos, and Microsoft with 365. Now, what we do is, and this is where it gets interesting in terms of the relationship between ourselves and Sophos, is that we actually integrate their endpoint security product around our backup data protection solution. So you can see here, I've got a picture of an appliance. So this is an ArcServe appliance that we layer our um, Sophos endpoint. It's actually the Incept X software on. So now we've got a first line of defense with a Sophos security wrap around this, which is managed through Sophos Central, just like you heard Chris talk about a few moments ago. Um, and that provides a security wrap around our data protection platform. So all of those environments on the left-hand side, and you can see I've highlighted the bottom left, those ones in red, the ones we're kind of focusing on right now, um, you know, Exchange Online. We protect all of that using our data protection techniques, but we've got this additional security wrap around them. So all of the advanced features that we have within the Sophos world, 
they actually come to play here as well. So this is this convergence I mentioned about five minutes ago, converging data protection, data security. We started on this journey in 2018. We brought this as a solution to market in 2019, and we extended it earlier this year to also layer software protection around our cloud offerings as well. So depending on how you may choose to architect a data protection solution, we can offer you on-premise, we can offer you cloud, we can offer you that hybrid model as well. So uh, just a quick word about this, and I don't want to um, steal Chris's thunder, but the Sophos Intercept X, it was mentioned by Chris, but very specifically, it has some very advanced features within it. And this is one reason why we as a company um, look to work with Sophos. We have a very similar heritage and pedigree. We've been around for uh, quite a few decades now, huge amounts of experience. What we didn't want to do was go and reinvent the wheel and write this code ourselves. We chose best of breed in the marketplace, that being Sophos. So we basically stop ransomware being delivered in the first place. Um, and we use various techniques. This is Sophos, you know, anti-exploit web security techniques. We stop it executing using things like deep learning, anti-malware virus, neural networking engine, all within this Incept X software. And then advanced techniques such as CryptoGuard that Chris mentioned to stop encryption in its tracks, roll it back, protect your data. Because that backup data, that is your last line of defense. And so what we're doing is putting that security wrap around it to provide that first line of defense in a single turnkey solution. So here we've got Office 365, Microsoft 365 with Exchange Online. If you choose to protect that in the ArcServe Cloud, we've got Sophos wrapped around that. That's at the top of that uh, simple schematic. If you actually wanted to use, for example, an on-premise deployment, so I've got a picture here of an appliance toward the bottom, we protect that with Sophos endpoint protection as well. So combining data protection with data security, single solution. And I mentioned this earlier, apologies, a little bit out of sequence, but we can actually get down to very granular levels of recoverability and management that you would not otherwise have. We've already talked about what 365 actually provides you. So we're giving a very full featured advanced data backup and protection capability here with everything in this turnkey solution. Um, from a licensing perspective, it actually can be very advantageous and we're very flexible in terms of how we do this on a per user basis or on a per capacity basis, uh, a basis and with our appliances, basically everything's included, you don't need to worry about it. So just a couple of different schematics to uh, kind of uh, draw this to a close at the end here. Um, within the schematic on the left-hand side, we've got your estates within um, your, your environments on the left-hand side with your servers, Office 365, whatever. We might have some appliances in there, some some marks of um, uh, uh, UDP appliances, but they're secured by Sophos. It might choose to replicate, you know, three to one rule to a cloud. You might go into public cloud, AWS, for example, but we can use and integrate with the Sophos endpoint protection to make sure that that data is secure. In the event that you are actually attacked, that you do need to recover, we can give you the confidence that you've got that. We've got your backs covered, basically. If you didn't want anything on-prem, you want to go straight to another cloud, for example, from Office 365, all of those different permutations are possible as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a, a feel, a bit of a flavor for how we can actually work together. And this is a security company in Sophos and then a data protection company, ArcServe, but how we bring the technologies together and we integrate these such that we give you, hopefully, the best of both worlds. So uh, I do have a slide here for Q&A, but at this point, I'm going to hand back to Andy, because this is not just an ArcServe Q&A, uh, this is an IT Health Q&A. So I just want to wrap up and say thank you very much for your attention, and I'm going to hand back to uh, Andy now. Andy. Thank you very much, Paul, and thank you as well to Chris for the Sophos piece. Uh, I hope all the attendees found that interesting. Um, we've saved some time at the end, for some questions. I've had a couple come through on the chat, um, but if there's any more, um, please do send them through now. Equally, um, you will be served a survey after this, which I'll come on to in a moment. But uh, firstly, first question I can see, uh, this one looks like it's for Paul. Um, are you able to back up shared folders? Um, shared folders, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, yes we can. Um, okay. We are pretty much a full featured sort of backup and data protection, uh, you know, um, organization with, with the facilities there. Yeah, we've been doing this for a long time. So, shared folders, yes. Okay, great. Um, and <laughs> another another question, uh, this is looks like it's from an existing Sophos customer. Um, would they be able to manage the intercept text that's embedded within ArcServe within their existing Sophos Central account? 
Right, I, I can answer that one. Um, it's Paul here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. yeah, the short answer, absolutely, Andy, is yes, you can. Yeah. So we have as ArcServe our own uh, master account, if you will, within Sophos Central for customers who are not yet familiar with Sophos. But if you've already got a Sophos Central, yes, you can. Great. That's uh, that's what we wanted to hear. And I think, you know, from an IT health perspective, um, that's a big reason why we've wanted to partner with ArcServe is because obviously a lot of our NHS customers are already running Sophos Central, so it's nice if they can manage this part of their estate um, using the same credentials and everything. So, excellent. Uh, thank you again. Uh, just before everyone goes, uh, as I mentioned, there will be a survey that, that you'll be presented with as soon as you leave the webinar. Uh, we'd be extremely grateful if you would take the time just to answer that. It's only a couple of questions. It's just really helpful for us to get some feedback in terms of how useful it was, if you've got any suggestions for future topics, but also if you want us to follow up with you in terms of any additional information, pricing, et cetera. So um, yeah, please do fill that in before you go. Uh, but other than that, thanks again, everyone. Thank you to Paul and Chris for joining us today and we'll look forward to seeing you all again soon. Goodbye. Thank you, bye.